Thanks everybody, uh, you know, for coming. You know, at Chevrolet, when we, when we do these events, we try to immerse you in not just the story of the product, but put you in an environment that really speaks to what we feel about that product and uh, who our customer is, etc. So we're very fortunate to be in a pretty unique space with a great friend of Chevrolet. His name's Jonathan Segal. He's uh, not here tonight, but he's an architect, obviously a connoisseur of some of the finer things in life. Is a great uh, automotive ambassador, but lots of other eclectic interests and tastes. Um, you know, has this great collection, but has a bowl TV and has lots of things in his portfolio. So we're fortunate to kind of feel that's really someone that really embodied what we really feel about uh, this 2019 Chevrolet Blazer. So uh, we appreciate uh, him opening up uh, one of his facilities uh, for us here today. It's all about crossovers and specifically Blazer. Phenomenal year last year, record sales for Trax, Equinox, and Traverse up anywhere from 15 to 20 percent in a monstrous uh, industry. Uh, record numbers for us across all three of those products. And it really is about having the right product at the right time. You can't get enough crossovers. We're often asked, how many is too many? You know, when is that, 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 when is that uh, you know, kind of change your thinking? It is not changing our thinking right now. We are clearly poised, we think, to continue to capitalize on that with a product like Blazer. Um, it, it's just going to be a, a great entry to our portfolio. And we think we're off to a great start. You know, one internal statistic we use is called consensus, which is basically a barometer of dealer demand. We go out to our dealers about every two weeks and we say, we can build X number of each of these products, and you have earned this percent of that product. Dealers can ask for more. So what we've seen on Blazer is they're asking for three times the amount that we're offering up. And we're offering up a pretty aggressive uh, amount of production. Now what that says is they have a lot of uh, interest we see from consumers. Blazer actually has 92,000 hand raisers since our reveal uh, in the spring or summer, early summer of this year. It's the second highest hand raiser quantity we receive on a Chevrolet product, trailing only the new Silverado. So there's a lot of built up interest for this category, uh, segment, and product. And from a business standpoint, I mentioned those business metrics earlier, but we have a lot of positive receptivity. ALG came out with their initial residual value estimate. Uh, for Blazer, and it was higher than Grand Cherokee, higher than Edge, higher than Murano. What that says is the combination of a, of a phenomenal product with great business strategy is paying off and it's going to allow us to do, we think, good things in the market there. You know, uh, Blazer is going to benefit from the launches that preceded it. So Equinox and Traverse, we did a number of things to really fundamentally change our business. It obviously starts with a great product. But this is about incentive spend, distribution strategies, how we go to market. We've learned a lot from previous launches, and what we're going to do with, it, with this product is essentially don't screw up a good thing. So, you know, the old line from the shampoo business, rinse, lather, repeat, that's really what we're going to do with Blazer. We're not going to overthink this. We've learned a lot from previous launches, and we'll put those things in play uh, for Blazer. So let's talk about mid-SUV, and let's, let's talk about Blazer a bit. Um, Second fastest growing segment in the industry behind only small SUV. Uh, the number three overall volume segment. So it's, it's, it's moving up the charts here. And all of the forecasts that we see, whether it's short term or I guess a bit of a midterm horizon, show significant growth uh, in the mid SUV segment. Interestingly, I think we all know this, once people get into a crossover in SUV, they tend to stay there. And that is indeed true. About 70% of people who get in these products stay within the overall crossover SUV segment. Mid SUV loyalty, so if you have a mid, you buy another mid, is about 40% loyalty. But interestingly, two row is a lower number than that. What that says is that there's a customer here who likes that space, but maybe likes to look for something new because design and newness is an important part in the two row. And I think that having the newest and freshest product there is going to serve us well. Um, another thing, 19 total entries, but only six now are two row entries. Of those entries, now two of them are brand new. You've got Blazer and you have uh, the new Honda Passport. So between those two, but those previous four, all of them are in the top 10 in sales. So there's appreciable volume within the SUV of the two row entries. And the two row makes up about 30% of that growing segment. So there's a lot of volume to be had in the two row part of the mid SUV segment. Another fundamental difference is, if you ask people in the three row why you bought the product, they're gonna list things about functionality, capability, I needed the third row, and that's true, and they still like styling and tech, etc. but there's purpose-driven reasons why people are getting that product. Two row, very interesting, people will say, 
it's design and styling, right? And quite often, you know, people like to have that intellectual alibi I have to kind of justify why I bought something. But in this segment, people just are, are unabashedly say, I like the looks, you know, I wanted it. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. But the other interesting thing is people have the financial wherewithal to do it. Second highest household income of all non lux segments is the two-row mid-SUV buyer. So they have the psychological need and desire and, and fit for this product, and they have the means by which uh, to get it. So we think that, that bodes well for Chevrolet and bodes well for uh, our go-to-market approach with Blazer. Uh, lastly, from, from my perspective, Chevrolet always has about five things that define each and every Chevrolet. It's design, performance, and technology always underpinned with great, uh, great quality and unbeatable value. We think Blazer is certainly going to pay that off. So we're going to talk about that today. Make no mistake, we are going to put design front and center in our communications, but we are not going to let people forget that underneath that, this is a highly functional, capable crossover SUV with great technology, safety features, et cetera, because that's what people demand and what they're looking for. Starting at $29,995, well equipped, and a nice walk up through the three different personalities and trims. So again, kind of the debut of a new kind of trim strategy approach for Chevrolet. Phenomenal starting price, $29,995. Well contented walks up as you go through uh, each of those different models. A very distinct, kind of more refined, sophisticated, luxury type persona. A little more street inspired, uh, you know, blackout look with the RS trim. Um, we have built about maybe and delivered about 3,000 or so to dealers right now, so we're just kind of starting system fill. We anticipate, uh, based on previous learnings about when the right time is, when we've got sufficient inventory and day supply, we forecast it to be about April 1st. So what you're going to see from Chevrolet um, right now, it's all Silverado all the time, and that's what we need to do. So uh, you probably noticed some of our, our, our Silverado launch advertising is really Chevrolet's primary message right now. We're going to let Blazer kind of system fill. Uh, we anticipate that, again, about April time for this room, we'll kind of unleash the hounds uh, with what we do uh, with, our, with our Blazer. So, again, thank you all uh, for being here with us.